Creatine is a supplement that hasn't been around for very long and initially was only used by a niche segment of athletes, but now has really gone mainstream. But what does the science tell us? Does it work? How much should you take? And is it safe? Let's get into it. So the fuel that your muscles use to function is called ATP. When you're working out, you're burning that ATP at a high rate, and when your muscles get depleted of ATP, they tire out and you get to failure. Now creatine is an organic compound which is naturally contained in your muscles and basically allows them to recycle ATP to keep going. So by supplementing with creatine, you can increase the amount of creatine stored in your muscle, which enables your muscles to make more ATP, which means they have more energy and you can do more work. So the idea here is that the creatine allows you to do more at the gym, and the more you can do, the more gains you'll see. Creatine first became popular after the 1992 Barcelona Olympics because a number of athletes who used it won medals in track and field. After that, supplements became commercially available in 1993, and since then we've had plenty of research on their benefits and their safety profile. In fact, creatine has not only been shown to have benefits in athletes, but also in people who are sedentary and in people who are older. And the first thing to mention is that most of the studies we have are for the supplement called creatine monohydrate. Although many other forms are promoted, there's no substantial evidence that other forms are better, so for most people, I recommend sticking with the basic form. What we know from studies is that supplementing with creatine does increase the amount of creatine stored in our muscles, and this improves exercise performance, especially when performing short bouts of exercise requiring a lot of muscle power. Ultimately, this translates to more muscle mass. But creatine also enhances muscle gains by stimulating the release of hormones that promote muscle growth, and by slowing down muscle breakdown. And the benefits are best studied for resistance training like weightlifting, but creatine has also been shown to improve high intensity speed training like sprinting. It also has beneficial effects on aerobic exercise, so you might see performance enhancements even in activities like basketball, swimming, tennis, and soccer. Typically after loading with creatine, you can expect your performance in any high intensity and or repetitive exercise to improve by 10 to 20%. With weightlifting specifically, studies have shown three different types of effects of creatine compared to placebo. Firstly, for the same number of reps, on average you'll be able to lift about 8% more weight. Alternatively, for the same weight, you'll be able to do about 14% more reps. And finally, the maximum weight you'll be able to push on a single rep on the bench press will go up anywhere from 16 to 43 percent. There are also studies showing other benefits, like better recovery after your workout, less injuries, better exercise tolerance in the heat, and even protective effects on both the brain and spinal cord in case of sports injury. But the question is, how much creatine do you actually need? Your body needs to replenish anywhere from about 1 to 3 grams of creatine per day just to maintain normal levels of creatine stores and it typically gets about half of its required creatine from your diet, particularly from meats, and actually makes the other half in your liver and kidneys. With a normal diet, your muscle creatine stores are about 60 to 80% saturated. So what you're trying to do with supplementation is get those stores up to 100%. The most effective way to do that up front is to load with a high dose to get your muscles saturated, then reduce to a maintenance dose after that load. So initially, you take about 0.3 grams per kilogram of body weight, or 0.14 grams per pound, divided into four times over the day. So for a typical 150 pound man, that works out to about five grams of creatine four times a day, and you do that for five to seven days. After that, you maintain your muscle stores by taking about three to five grams per day, or a little bit more for heavier people. And if you don't want to load, 3-5 to five grams a day will still get you fully saturated over about a month of regular use. Although some people suggest cycling on and off creatine, that doesn't seem to have any benefits. Consuming carbs at the same time as your creatine does increase muscle uptake due to insulin release, and protein consumption also increases your creatine uptake. This is why you will often see creatine supplements that come as combos with protein or carbs, or both. So taking it with meals or in a combo supplement is probably the best way to do it, and post-workout is probably the best time to take it. But the big question is whether creatine is safe. The good news is that there are over a thousand studies that have looked at the safety and efficacy of creatine supplementation. Most of those studies are in adults, so the first thing is that we can't necessarily extend those results to teenagers. Now there have been concerns about kidney problems due to creatine supplementation, but those reports were either in people taking really high doses, or in people with pre-existing kidney disorders, 
or people using medications that can harm their kidneys. On the other hand, plenty of studies demonstrate that it doesn't cause kidney damage when taken at appropriate doses in healthy people. And we now have studies looking at supplementation for as long as about five years that show no harms. You might also hear that creatine can lead to dehydration and worse muscle cramps, but if anything, studies have shown the opposite. Now, some studies do suggest that supplementation will reduce your body's natural creatine production to some extent, but this recovers quickly after you stop, so there doesn't appear to be any long-term suppression of natural creatine synthesis. The last one you'll often hear about is a concern that creatine causes hair loss. This comes from a single study in 20 rugby players from South Africa, which showed that creatine supplementation increased levels of a hormone called dihydrotestosterone, or DHT. DHT is known to promote male pattern baldness. The challenge is that it's one small study, it didn't actually measure hair loss, and it hasn't been replicated. In fact, multiple other studies have not shown effects on total testosterone or free testosterone, which is what the body uses to make DHT. Creatine is a naturally occurring compound that allows your muscle cells to work harder. By taking supplements, you can increase the amount of creatine stored in your muscles, which many studies have shown can increase your performance, your strength, and your muscle mass. And if you take it in the right quantity, it's not only effective, but it's also safe. For more health and science info, subscribe to the feed.